and this um, uh, need you to get elder uh, kids. And if you teach kids on his native language, you can start to teach him programming as fast as he can read. Yeah. So it's about five years old in Russia. Well, I, uh, I, I uh, work with uh, children in kindergarten. Then they don't know how uh, they can read. Then uh, what we do, we read colors. Huh. Yes, because every uh, uh, order has different colors. Then if they need to move, they use the yellow or they, if they need to change, they need the other colors. And we use the not all commands because it's too difficult, but we use only a few commands we need in different colors. Mm. And that's what our language was the colors. <sighs> yes. Well, in the past, mm. uh, English for coding is privileged for those middle class or even higher class uh, parents and their children. But if we have like Scratch Junior with colors, so we don't, uh, we actually have equal access for those in different um, classes. And uh, uh, in, in China, China is uh, big, so we have like sub uh, culture or sub language in, in different regions. Uh, for example, I'm from Beijing, the capital of China, but uh, we have uh, migrant children. Like their parents went to Beijing to earn a living, but they their their children don't have uh, equal access to uh, good education resources. Mm. They even uh, had to return back to their hometown for their primary school. But we delivered a migrant children code to learn program to those uh, children with Scratch Junior. So we, we try to create a equal culture uh, across their eco economy background, uh, not to mention their uh, parents' mm -hmm. academic background. So this equal culture is valued mm -hmm. by uh, some foundations and even by some NASDAQ listed companies, they sponsor us uh, iPad. And so we, we provide our content. Mm -hmm. And we, we have a uh, three parties uh, cooperation for this project. Yeah, so I think it's a good, fantastic tool to create such uh, equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to do this now a little bit more, but I work in a museum. And it's a natural history museum, but I worked previously in an art museum. And, for example, in an art museum, you'll have collections from all over the world, right? So how do we get our young people to relate to that collection, wherever it's from? And so my interest is to try to help them see themselves in the collection. But if I can use Scratch to do that and to express themselves in some way, um, maybe that's a, that's a window of opportunity for them to learn A, either about their own culture, or B, to learn about somebody else from some other part of the world in any period of history, from any, any time in history, in other words. So mm. I, it's, a, it's a big question, but that's something I look forward to exploring because I care so much about tolerance and um, we can learn so much from our past. And so mm. again, museums collections open that opportunity. We are going to do a, a project in, in France that we, we've been, we are going to work, we are working now with uh, UNICEF, you know, uh, and uh, they are going, in France they are going to launch a platform, an online platform and they wanted to engage kids on the platform that didn't know how to, and so we are going to, to do a project for them, they are going to have challenges with, um, they will have video and story about kids that are in difficulties around the world, and they will uh, suggest to kids to use Scratch to tell a story, tell the end of the story, or write to those kids. And really, so we are going to provide tutorials for that. But really, the idea is that the kids will use Scratch as a media uh, to, uh, yeah, to express themselves and to uh, express their concern about uh, what happened to those kids all around the world. So I'm really looking forward to see how well it does work. But uh, I think it's a powerful way to use Scratch.
Mm. And I think it references back very greatly to what Taryn showed us yesterday that maybe some students don't want to go into linear mm -hmm. programming or mm -hmm. come in from the programming end, but they're coming in from the dialogue end and the creative animation and telling their own stories mm -hmm. as the youngest person in the room. And also, about, it's about them, the scratch programs they're creating are about them and their concerns, and it's collaborative. Anyone else with the same interest or concern can join across. But also, you were talking about the, the digital divide, we call it, in, in Vishing. It's very important that Scratch stays both online and offline, so mm. that the students who don't have online access but can get a iPad-sponsored can still work offline. Those are the two things I'm hearing. Mm. last year with 17 countries mm -hmm. in South Africa, being as one of the key countries. Uh, I was the ambassador for Morocco and uh, the results were really, really cool um, with kids from 8 to 23 years old and um, more than 88,000 uh, kids were engaged in using Scratch, in expressing themselves um, and this year this is uh, it keeps spreading out uh, in all over the, the continent in Africa in more than uh, 30 countries. And um, even if the materials, uh, you know, to train the trainers and, uh, uh, are available this year in French, in English and in Portuguese, the amazing thing is that in each project, scratch project of the kids, you can see so many different ways of expressing themselves, whereas with images that are visualization, um, uh, drawings and different languages as well, very local. And that's, uh, so you, you can see a really, uh, I mean, those differences which uh, make this continent so rich, 